am Corby Mitleid, and welcome to Cafe Corby. Before we get started, be sure to click the subscribe button so you never miss news from the nest. Today we're continuing our Wheel of the Year meditations with one for Imbolc, or Candlemas. Imbolc is a preparation for spring. It's a time to clean and organize hearth and home as well as minds and hearts in preparation for the upcoming season of growth. It's a time to shake off the doldrums of late winter and light the fires of creativity and inspiration. Relax. Get comfortable. Get your wiggles out and settle down. Close your eyes and take a deep, cleansing breath in and let it gently go. Fill your lungs, pull in sweet oxygen and let it out. One more time. In and out. Locate your center point. Feel yourself completely balanced, completely at ease. Feel your spine lengthen like a taproot, planting itself deep in the earth, giving you strength and stamina. Let the top of your head, your crown chakra, open like a skylight letting in the cosmic light. You are now settled, anchored, and can let your body go. It will take care of itself while you walk the corridors of thought and imagination. You stand in a field watching the sun come up on a country expanse. The quality of the light has changed since the winter solstice. It's a little higher, a little brighter. Can we go for a walk? Pipes a little voice next to you. You look to your left and you find it is the sun child from Yule, now looking like a cheerful, inquisitive preschooler bundled up for the cold with a pom-pom hat and a bright yellow snow vest. He takes your hand and pulls you further into the field. He chatters as the two of you ramble along. He is full of new ideas, happy thoughts, and eagerness to explore. You catch his energy, and your heart lifts. As you walk, you notice the ground is changing. While you started out with a few inches of snow, now it's slush, and the earth feels spongy under your feet. The soil itself seems to respond to the sun child, willing itself to absorb the winter energies so that spring can emerge. Signs of the season's promise begin to show themselves. You come upon a group of snowdrops. They are tiny flowers, their creamy blossoms hanging from emerald stems. It's as if the snow itself has transformed into something living and growing. The sun child, delighted, bends down and plucks one. Another instantly grows in its place. The child cups the flower in his hands, smiles, and breathes on it gently. It opens up, and at its center is a gift, something to bring spring into your own life. As he holds it up for you, look carefully What gift is there for you? How can you use it? What does it touch inside you 
that wants to grow. As the two of you continue through the countryside, you notice bits of winter adventures that are vanishing. Someone's Christmas tree has been stripped of its finery and left to drop its needles, the winter birds nesting in the exposed branches. A woolen mitten lies sodden, forgotten, its colors faded, as a mouse nibbles the yarn to line its nest. And someone has dropped a journal. Its binding is soggy, the pages torn, and the ink illegible. But you can still make out the dates at the top of the pages, running through December and January. The sun child picks it up, looking at it thoughtfully. No more stories here, he says, but I bet it could tell us some springtime things. A candle appears in his hand, and he passes the book through the flame. The volume sizzles, but does not burn, nor does the candle wink out. Instead, the book immediately becomes dry, the bindings tight, and the page is pristine, waiting for new words and new creations. Here, he says delightedly, this is yours now. You open it up and find that the first page has a title. The title is perfect for you, speaking of what you want to create in the weeks and months before the summer solstice. The sun child scans the woods that border the open field and suddenly tugs your hand. Look, look, I knew he'd come. A great wolf, silver and white, comes casually loping out from the trees. There is nobility and fierceness to it, and yet you sense that around the sun child there will also be gentleness. It trots up to the sun child, its muzzle thrusting under the child's hand in recognition. The sun child giggles and scratches it behind the ears. The wolf sits down with a thump, ignoring the fact that its haunches are now sunk in mud and snow. Do you want to pet him? asks the child. All you have to do is give him something to eat. When you look at the child, puzzled, he says, Check your pockets. I bet there's something from the winter you don't want anymore. You reach in and find... What? Is it a thought? Is it a failed project? Is it something you've outgrown? Give it a solid form. Thank it for the lessons it brought. And hold it out, flat on your palm, to the wolf. The wolf takes it from you, crunching down hard as if it's a puppy treat. Do you have anything else in your pocket? The wolf will eat everything you're done with. Finally, you dust off your hands, showing the wolf that your pockets are empty. He hoofs and rolls in the muddy slush. Shaking himself as he rises, he spatters everything, his jaws open and tongue lolling, as if laughing at the silly creatures who think staying clean is a good thing. With a final hoof, he returns to the woods. You know, says the child thoughtfully, I bet there's stuff at your house the wolf could eat. Want to see? And suddenly you're at the threshold of your own dwelling. 
the child taking off his boots and hat and vest and gloves just inside the door. You feel the house grow warmer, not with firewood or heater warmth, but the mere presence of the child, sunlight spilling through the rooms. You roll up your sleeves and go to the closet with all your cleaning materials, mops and brooms and buckets, bottles and jars. What do their labels say? Are they new or old, empty or full? What do they especially want to clean and remove that has been lingering all winter? The sun child eagerly reaches for a rag and a bucket. His enthusiasm fills you, heady warmth running through your veins like champagne. It energizes you, excites you, and you begin to tackle the entire house, room by room. Which rooms are most in need of cleaning? What does that say about your thoughts? your habits, your beliefs about what goes on in each of those rooms. What room would you go to first? How do you clean each one? The gift that you received, how will it be of help in each room? Notice that every time a room is finished and cleaned, A little more of winter melts away from the outside view, and the sun child is with you, scrubbing, chattering, dancing in each clean room. Finally, you step into the middle of your house. It's clean, shining, beautiful, and refreshed. You turn and see the field outside your window. The snow is gone. Snowdrops fill your yard. And one spring bird sits in the nearest tree, warbling the promise of what's to come. Take it all in. Take in all that you have done. Acknowledge the growth you have achieved, perhaps slumbering and unbeknownst to you during the time of frost and dark. Focus all your thoughts, all your desires for the coming season, all lessons learned in the palms of your cupped hands. Watch as one miraculous seed materializes. The child smiles. That's good. Now let's put it outside. As you cover it with soil, whisper to it what you intend for it to grow into. Bless it, bless your helpers, and thank the source of all for bringing you through the winter to this moment. Consign your seedling to the source, knowing that it will get everything, sun and rain, warmth and nourishment, it needs to grow. The child jumps up and down, as children will. Okay, now time to go do more stuff. But as you move to follow, he shakes his head. Nope, you have things to do here now. I have to go fix the veil, because it's time for things to go back behind it until Lamas. He waves and skips into the field, growing brighter and brighter until he is a dancing sunbeam that streaks into the morning sky. You look around, at your shining house, your warming yard, and the journal that you still have in your pocket. You smile. Spring is coming indeed, and you can't wait to write down all the plans you have this year for growth, 
for creation, for expansion. You look up, blinking at the streaming sunlight, and wave one last time where you know the sun child is watching. And you turn to begin the growing time of your year. That's it for today at Cafe Corby. Special thanks to our Patreon team, whose support enables us to bring you all these videos. Amy Bush, Shannon Hayes, Robin McAleer, and Frankie Wood. Be sure to visit us on Facebook at Fire Through Spirit, or join us on Patreon for exclusive content and to be part of the flock. We'll see you again soon.